Welcome to Agoracom, the small cap epicenter on Agoracom TV, a daily fast-paced, edgy show, bringing the best press release out of the small cap space every morning at the open so you can hopefully profit from them, maybe find your next rate small cap investment. It's uh, Tuesday, November the 29th. I almost forgot the day. I've got five press releases for you, some pretty big ones coming out of the energy space. I'm really excited about a lot of these. First up, and it's been halted, Orbit Illuminate, trades on the big board, TSX, on the stock symbol ORT. Uh, they've announced the release of a positive preliminary economic assessment for the planned metallurgical grade alumina plant. Uh, I'm going to talk about that a little bit in a second. Here are the numbers. Economics show uh, $7.7 billion in net present value. Internal rate of return 114%. These are massive numbers, and I love this. Payback in less than one year. That's fantastic. They plan to produce an estimated 540,000 tons per year of alumina, 189,000 tons of pure hematite, 1.2 million tons of high purity silica, 28,000 tons of magnesium oxide, 104,000 tons of other value added oxides, and 820 tons of rare metals and rare uh, earth oxide. Here are some other highlights here. The indicated resource, they have an indicated resource of approximately 1 billion metric tons of homogeneous aluminous clay. Uh, that's per their 43101. A feasibility study is now underway uh, with the contract award to Genovar Inc. And they're expecting, uh, to, they're expecting to have that completed during the first half of 2012 with planned commissioning late 2013. So a little bit about this company. Uh, the stock is halted. They closed yesterday at 295. Orbit owns 100% of the mining rights on approximately 6,500 acres of a property, uh, which is the site of an aluminous clay deposit that's about 23 kilometers to the south of Grand Valley. They also own a 2,600-square-meter full-scale pilot plant. Uh, the 43101 report issued in August 2011 has identified an indicator resource about a billion tons of aluminous clay in part of the deposit, they also own, I think this is the real keeper here, the intellectual property rights to a unique Canada-U.S. patented process for extracting alumina from aluminous ores for which patents are also pending in other countries. So they've got this great resource and this fantastic technology fully patented to extract uh, the alumina. This company has been volatile. It's been up as high as $5.50 or so. It's been down uh, into the twos, close at two ninety five. I like this news. Uh, little tip for you, just uh, the stock was halted, but it looked like some trades did take place in the first five minutes of trading. The stock was up to 326. Then it was halted. It looks like what the what IROC has done is wipe out uh, those five minutes of trades because it should have been halted uh, given this news. So watch this today. I think this is not only a short-term play, but this should become part of your long-term holdings, but you got to do your own due diligence. Next up, M. NMC Resources trades on the venture under NRC. Hadn't heard of this company before. That's what I love about the show, always discovering something new. They're announcing that they've recorded revenue of $9.2 million for the nine months ending September 30th. Uh, during that time, they had a net loss of just uh, about $230,000, not a big deal. But they did report record operating cash flow of $0.11 cents per share. So what that tells me is the revenue is spinning off cash. They probably had a net loss because of all sorts of write-offs things they had to do. And, in fact, that comes out in the EBITDA, their adjusted EBITDA was actually $2.8 million, and that's uh, net earnings before interest, taxes, uh, amortization, and share-based payments. So they are generating cash flow, very important, $0.11 cents per share for the first nine months. Pretty good because they're, in fact, trading at $0.60 cents per share. Uh, revenue increased during Q3, that's not for the whole nine months, but Q3, uh, by 114%. Uh, Do Hyun Kim, the president and chief executive officer, had a quote. Here's an excerpt. In this turbulent market, NMC Molan's mines, stable production gives us a strong competitive edge to be well positioned for future growth. Said another way, they've got cash. It looks like they won't have to be going to the market for cash if they need it. That's a strong competitive advantage, especially what's going on in Europe right now and uh, whatever uh, cascading effects that may have. You don't want a junior to be too susceptible and we'll have to go to the market begging for money. Uh, NMC, I discovered today, like I said, a little bit about them. They're a mining company with two Mali assets. Looks like the significant one is uh, their Molan mine in South Korea, which is producing. It's a producing uh, molybdenum mine with an increase in production profile and resources base. I like that. Uh, closed yesterday, $0.60, cents, $1.17 on the high, $0.40 cents on the 52-week low. A mark cap, about $16 million. So based on that, I'm liking what I'm seeing here, uh, and I like its strength. It's going to have a lot less bait on volatility 
um, as uh, if things get rocky. Nitex Energy Holdings, OTCQB, NYTE, they announced a third quarter unaudited results. Uh, revenues for the three and nine months end of September 30th were $23 million and $64 million, respectively. Nice number. That compares to revenue of $440,000, $680,000 last year for the same periods, but I think that's when they acquired one of their subsidiaries in November 2010. They did record, uh, and now we're talking about, the, uh, they did record a net loss of $1.46 million, or $0.06 cents per share, for the three months. Uh, that compares to a net loss of uh, uh, just over $2 million and 10 cents per share. So they did improve in the quarter uh, by bringing their losses down. They also had a net loss of about $6.87 million or 27 cents per share for the nine month. Now that's going the wrong way because they had $2.6 million and 13 cents in losses for the nine months end of September 30, 2010. So you got to take a look at that. Uh, I like the fact that they gave fourth quarter and 2011 year end revenue guidance, which is $21.7 million fourth quarter revenue. 85.8 million uh, year-end revenue guidance, and also they're giving us some EBITDA projections coming at 2.4 for the fourth quarter. More importantly, 7.8 million for the uh, for the entire year. So I like the fact that the company's able to give out guidance, especially given the fact they've got a mark cap of under 20 million dollars. Closed yesterday at 70 cents. Now they're 52 trading range, 51 on the low, six dollars on the high. Something went wrong there. You're going to have to go take a look, do some due diligence. But at the same time, it may be overshot. We're going to tax loss selling season. I think you have an opportunity here. Take a close look at them. One of the subsidiaries is a 34-year-old full-service provider of drilling, completion, specialized fluids, and specialty additives for the oil and gas industry, amongst other things. So it's a pretty stable business. And if the Republicans uh, win the White House, look for them to drill, baby drill, as they've said, and that will be good business for them. Uh, switching over to the TSX. Our good friends over at International Lydian, LYD, announced that they drilled 99 meters, 4 grams per ton of gold. They're saying that step-out drilling further extends their resource potential, and uh, exploratory drilling has intersected gold on the new northeast zone. Uh, the company has a great project. It's called the Amulsar Gold Project in Armenia. Currently hosts a CIM-compliant indicated resource of 1.1 million ounces at 1.1 grams ton of gold, plus an inferred resource of 1.4 million ounces, at 0.9 grams ton of gold. Uh, results have been received from a further 22 combined diamond and reverse circulation drill holes. Go take a look at them. A uh, couple of notable intersections. The headline number that I gave you, 99 meters, 4.0 grams. But you also have 49 meters, 1.2 grams ton of gold. They closed yesterday, 294. Goes to show you uh, they've, they've done very well despite the turbulence of the resource markets. Not too far off their 52-week high of $3.21 and substantially above their low of $1.78. So Lydian has a, done a good job of, of providing shareholders with a real stable uh, stock price. Finlay Minerals, TSX Venture, FYL, 76 meters, 0.43 grams ton of gold. They got silver. They've got copper. It all comes out to a 0.91% copper equivalent, so it's 76 meters of 0.91% copper equivalent. The company's saying that they're reporting the discovery of a significant new gold, silver, copper mineralization. That's their word, so you got to, uh, they're putting their money where their mouth is. This is on their 100% owned silver hole property, which is in central British Columbia. Go take a look at their results. Close yesterday, 11 cents. Their 52-week low is 11 cents. So again, uh, find out why they're trading way off their high of 80 cents. I know a lot of these small companies got ahead of themselves. Uh, but you may be able to uh, you may be able to catch uh, some uh, baby being thrown out the bathwater here. That's a wrap. As always, quality over quantity. If you're looking for more great small cap resource companies, and you watch this on Globe Investor, look below me or the left of me. See the companies we've covered over the past few days. Otherwise, if you're looking for great small cap stories in general. Get to the front page of Agoracom, watch the show, take a look at the best headlines on my right, and get into our marketplace to discover your next great small cap stock. That's a wrap. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.